Good morning, and welcome to our worship service this morning as we continue our summer series in the book of Matthew. As you know, our services have begun outside, but we're going to keep this option open for anyone who wishes to partake on our Facebook page and on our website and on YouTube. So please uh, join us this morning uh, for this time for worship, and we're glad to have you here. I'm here to lead us into the call of worship. Please follow along. Come and worship everyone on earth, everywhere the sun shines. Let's praise God together for listening when we call, answering our prayers, forgiving our mistakes, and providing what we need. Let's praise God together. Come and worship everyone on earth, everywhere the sun shines. Let's praise God together. Amen. Well, let's pray and prepare our hearts for the psalm and for the rest of the service. Gracious, loving Heavenly Father, we thank you and praise you for bringing us to another wonderful day, for waking us up in this beautiful place we live in here in Saranac Lake. Lord, I pray for this service this morning. Help our eyes to be open to the truth of your word, our ears to be open to hear the power of your word, and our hearts to be open to take it and let it change us, Lord. God, and direct us this morning. Help us that all that we do, we please you in this service. And just bless those that listen to this service and that take part in it. And just be with us and help us because we need you to be our strength. Thank you, Lord. 
We lift these things to you in faith because we ask in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. The reading for this morning comes to us from the book of Matthew, the fifth chapter, beginning at the 17th verse. Don't must understand why I have come. I did not come to abolish the law of Moses or the writings of the prophets. No, I came to accomplish their purpose. I tell you the truth, until heaven and earth disappear, not even the smallest detail of God's law will disappear until its purpose is achieved. So if you ignore the least commandment and teach others to do the same, you will be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But anyone who obeys God's law and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. But I warn you, unless your righteousness is better than the righteousness of the teachers of the religious law and the Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. The word of the Lord, thanks be to God. This morning we have some very powerful words by Jesus as he sits with his disciples on that Galilean hillside and he's giving them the Sermon on the Mount and he's teaching them that the system that they were following is corrupt, that it no longer serves God's purpose because it's serving man's purpose before God's purpose. And he's saying to, to them, I warn you, unless your righteousness is better than the righteousness of the teachers of the religious law and the Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. He's basically poking all the religious leaders of that time in the chest and saying, you're hypocrites. You're using the law and, the, and all of God's gifts to serve yourselves and not God's people. And he points that out even more powerfully in, when he talks about the commandments because God gave us the commandments so that we can get right with ourselves so that we can be right with him. Let's look at those 10 commandments to worship, to have the Sabbath, to honor our, to not have idols before God, to, to honor our parents, to not kill, steal, bear false witness, to not covet. These laws are powerful laws that help us to control who we are. And Jesus even says later on that I'm sending the advocate so that you can obey these things to the best of your ability. He knows that we will fall victim to sin, but he also understands that as long as we try to do what's right for God first, then we will be well and equipped to deal with the world around us. How often you hear right now People saying, and you've seen it on TV, I'm sure, well, this person lied to cover for this person over here. Well, false witness. And it's like, well, they, and they'll say, well, I'm loyal to this person. I should be able to lie for that person. No, you don't lie. The law is very black and white. Don't kill. Don't commit adultery. Don't bear false witness. Don't covet. Don't want what somebody else has because God has given you what you need. And now you're saying God is not giving you enough. You need more. And what kind of appetite does that show not only yourself, but you, the appetite you have, but to the people around you? We live in a culture that's been corrupted just like it was 2,000 years ago where bigger is better. I've got to have that. I must get one of those my neighbor has this, keeping up with the Joneses. All of this is sinful thought and sinful behavior. And Jesus says, these laws are there to guide us and guard us against this, to bring us peace, to bring us a sense of wholeness, a sense of completeness in ourselves. How can I, just being an honest and good man, I hope, love my wife if I'm looking at someone else? How do I love my wife when I even start comparing her to someone else? God has given me her, and to her I'm to be faithful. 
And of course, faithful means you bring it your best energies. That's what faithfulness is. To be faithful to the commandments doesn't mean we're going to keep them all the time. Because we'll break them. There isn't one I haven't broken in one way or the other. But, but, we bring our best selves in trying to keep them. And being conscientious about keeping them. And knowing them well enough to know in our conscience when we're getting close to breaking them. And then more importantly, if we do, having the conscience and the insight to go to our Lord and ask for forgiveness, which he graciously gives. But it doesn't mean he's come to abolish the law. He says, no, I'm not here to abolish it. I'm here to make sure it's achieved in spirit. Get your spirit behind this law, my commandments, and you will be close to keeping them. And you'll certainly not have someone else break them for your sake. But if your spirit's not engaged, if these are just good ideas, or if these are just a philosophy to guide us, then they're up for grabs and they're negotiable. Well, they're not negotiable to God. He's saying the, the Pharisees who started negotiating them away, he says they're not even welcome in the kingdom of heaven. What does it gain a man if he gains the whole world? What does it serve a man if he gains the whole world but loses his soul? And I know that you, like myself, have bartered with these commandments. We've made deals with them. We said, God, uh, sorry about that, and I'm just going to break this one a little bit. Or we don't think it's really breaking it because it doesn't seem that important or that bad. Because if we cheat on our taxes, it's not really cheating because the government has a lot of money. Or if we lie to someone for this reason, it's not really a lie because it's just a little lie. It's a lie. It's a lie. And who are we when we can't trust ourselves? Who are we to others? Who are we when we don't keep our word? In our ordination, and as well as our baptism, and confirmation classes, but as pastor is in our ordination, it says, will you keep the, and teach the commandments? And the words that are replied by the, to the question by the pastor is, I will and I ask God to help me. I can't do this by myself. I need God's power within me to do it. And that's why that relationship with Christ is so important. We can do nothing without the will of Christ within us, that goodness of God within us. And when we believe we have it and we've got it down, that's when the enemy's going to come in and trip us up. We turn every day to our Lord and Savior to help us through the day, to guide us, to strengthen us. Because these commandments, we don't break them very often. We break upon them. And if we're not careful, we can really... We can really hurt people and we can really be hurt by not listening and following the rules that he's laid before us. So as we continue the study in Matthew, make sure that you know the 10. If I handed you a piece of paper right now, could you write down all 10? Because if you don't know them, if you don't know the rules, how can you play the game? Amen. Our psalm for today is Psalm 65, 1 through 13. You are to be praised, O God, in Zion. To you shall vows be fulfilled. To you, the one who answers prayer. To you, all flesh shall come. Our sins are stronger than we are, but you blot out our transgressions. Happy are they whom you choose and draw to your courts to dwell there. They will be satisfied by the beauty of your house, by the holiness of your temple. Awesome things will show us in your righteousness, O God of our salvation. O hope of all the ends of the earth and of the oceans far away. You make firm the mountains by your power. You are girded about with might. You still the roaring of the seas. 
the roaring of their waves, and the clamor of the peoples. Those who dwell at the ends of the earth will tremble at your marvelous signs. You make the dawn and the dusk sing for joy. You visit the earth and water it abundantly. You make it very plenteous. The river of God is full of water. You prepare the grain, for so you provide for the earth. You drench the furrows and smooth out the ridges. With heavy rain, you soften the ground and bless its increase. You crown the year with your goodness, and your paths overflow with plenty. May the fields of the wilderness be rich for grazing, and the hills be clothed with joy. May the meadows cover themselves with flocks, and the valleys cloak themselves with grain. Let them shout for joy and sing. Amen. At this part in our service, we talk about our joys and concerns, and we know that uh, since we've been outside, we've been getting some feedback of different things that are going on in people's lives, and we know that some people have been hurting. Some people are in nursing homes and not being able to be visited uh, by friends and family, and other people are isolated and climbing the walls, as it were, because there's so much going on in, in the world today that they can't really uh, get out. So I would ask that you would send your joys and concerns to us because we know that there are some, some wonderful joys. One joy I have is I sent my <clears throat> eldest son off to his military school down in South Carolina where he's going to become an army chaplain officially. These are the kinds of things that mark our lives. I know another great joy is the fact that we have Georgia back from be, being down south, and seeing her is just a real pleasure. So we do have some joys to celebrate. I, another joy I would just want to share is that our Bible study on Sundays at 2 o'clock is just really a lot of fun, and people are enjoying it. Feel free to join us for that. These are the joys, as well as the concerns as people battle sickness and injury 
and heartache and distance. I know uh, one family wanted to celebrate a birthday with somebody they love. It was Ruth Woodward's son was going to come out and visit her, but because they're on the West Coast, they don't feel comfortable coming this distance in, uh, in these conditions. So we think and we, we feel for her as she celebrates another birthday. And uh, just away from family and people we love, it hurts. But Christ tells us, but if we are strong in spirit, we can join together in that. So I invite you now to join me in a prayer as we pray for our church, our world, and the people we know and love. Let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, you have indeed given us another day. After a long, hot week where the Adirondacks is one of the few places where in the evening we get the cool breeze and we, we know that your life surrounds us. And we are grateful, Lord, for the gifts that you give us. We're grateful for one another, for our church, and for the ministries we provide, and for those who minister to us. We're grateful for hands of mercy that help the elderly and the young, that help us each and every time we might need something that is beyond us. There's always a hand there, it seems, to help us. Helping hands are beautiful hands, Lord, and you ask us to be the hands for others and others to be the hands for us. So we're grateful for those helping hands and for merciful acts and deeds. We're grateful for first responders, and we are grateful for the police department and what they do. We're grateful for our leaders who are challenged at this time, Lord, to make good decisions in difficult conditions and ones they've never faced before. And we ask you, Lord, to guide them with your love and your presence. Give them your spirit, Lord, so there's more unity than division, there's more listening than talking, more understanding than attitude and aggression. Lord, your world is fragile, just like our spirits are fragile. And that when they're pushed and stressed, we can make mistakes and often break things. We know, Lord, we have the ability to break people. We know we have the ability to break people's spirits and their hearts. Help us to be good, thoughtful, kind, and considerate. Lord, we pray this day for those who are convalescing. and We pray for Rusty and uh, we pray for Diane and Cameron Anderson. We pray for uh, Vicki and Mark and so many others, Lord, that are just struggling right now with different cancers and, and different maladies. <clears throat> we pray for those, Lord, who are homebound, those who are up in Will Rogers and aren't allowed to get out and go and do things. Lord, it's a hard time right now for many. And we just ask your spirit to comfort them Bring them a sense of peace and bring them your love. Lord, we thank you. We thank you for your presence in our lives. And we ask you to bless us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. I invite you to join with me in the Lord's Prayer as we pray this day. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I want to thank you for sending your offerings into the church, and I want to thank you for supporting our ministries and the ministries of this church. And I just ask that uh, this next week that you be mindful about how people look to you as being a teacher. We're always watched by other people, and we're always sending out signals, and we want them to be good. If we call ourselves Christians, we should be teaching people good things every day by our example, because Jesus would have us be a good example. But I hope you have a chance to put some, your feet in some cold water, have a glass of iced tea or whatever you like to drink, but I hope you have a blessed week in the Lord, and thank you for joining us.
Allah.